Today is Tuesday, April the 26th, 2011, and uh, what I'm going to document here for you, and hope that it'll help some, is um, a way to protect, three different ways to protect your load, whatever your load may be. I'm, in this case, I'm using a 5 ohm, 100 watt resistor to simulate. This may be your amplifier, uh, a circuit within a circuit, whatever this, whatever this precious device is out here of yours, <clears throat> we want to be able to protect it from reverse polarity. That's what we want to do. Suppose we have this device. Um, I've got a meter hooked up across it right here. We've got no voltage across it. But suppose this is, this is your, dev your device. You want to protect and make sure that no matter what happens out here in this part of the world where you have your power supply, this is uh, this is uh, coming from the a large power supply down here. This guy right here, here's the other end of that wire. And I'm running about 4.8 volts. And uh, here we are back at this end. This is plus, this is minus. Red's plus, white's minus. What we want to do is protect this device against accidental uh, reverse polarity at this point. Like if you have a, a mobile device, this can be very important. It's happened to me before, and and it's kind of tragic when for the equipment. Now, first of all, we'll hook it up like this. This is a one amp fuse and a little fuse holder. And over here, we see that we have about 4.8 volts. Now, one way to protect it from reverse polarity right now, if we were, see it's it's plus, there's no negative sign out there. If um, if we reverse the polarity, then of course the polarity is going to change over here and it's going to go negative. I think we uh, don't need to do that. We know that's going to happen. But if we put a diode in it, a single diode in series with it, then whereas we had 4.8, see how the diode is pointing this way. This is the diode right here. Here's our power supply. Here's our fuse and here's our diode pointing this way to plus that's going into our device, in our case a resistor. But here we have the same circuit except we've inserted a diode and instead of 4.8 we have 4.1 because it's a well-known fact that you get about <clears throat> 0.7 volts drop across a diode. We can actually measure that. We will just for our own satisfaction. I'm hooking up the fluke meter here to it. And there's our 0.69 volts, the glare off, 0.769, I'm sorry. Just as a matter of fact, you have a small voltage drop even across the fuse right here. You have uh, see, a quarter of a volt drop just across the fuse. Okay, just for the record. Okay, now we have our 4.11 volts because we know we've lost some of it across our diode. But if we make the big mistake here and we um, hook things up backwards, say so we're hooking the negative to the plus and the plus to the minus with our diode in series with it, Nothing. Nothing happens. So if you hook it up wrong with a diode in series with it, nothing happens. It just simply doesn't work. But if this, but if this device right here were your amplifier or your transceiver or whatever it might be, and it's solid state, it, 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 it is very polarity sensitive. This right here is going to protect it. Of course, this diode's got to be rated at enough current you got to take all that stuff into consideration. You got to understand that you got to be able to tolerate this 0.7 volt drop, etc. You might have to put this on a heat sink. We won't go into all that. But this is one method. Now I'm going to wire it for another method. Okay, now here's the second method. Same wires, everything's the same. Our fuse, except in this case, we've got the diode wired straight across with the uh, with the diode with the band, which is known as the cathode, pointing and connected to the positive end and the anode connected to the negative end because the diode right now is reverse biased, so it's not conducting. And there's our 4.7 volts. 
so we didn't lose our 0.7 volts now. So this is this is kind of cool. This is good. So what happens now if we reverse the polarity? Okay, I hope I can capture this properly. But what's going to happen is if we remove these things and connect it backwards with the negative to the positive and the positive to the negative. Watch our poor fuse right here. There it went. We blew the fuse. Aha, great. Well, we sacrificed a fuse, but we, again, saved our, our expensive device out here. So now we have no voltage because we smoked the fuse. This is great. We hooked it up wrong, we blew the fuse. Whew, our stuff is still good. That's the second way to protect your expensive device. Let's do the third one. Okay, now here's our third way of protecting our, our valuable device, and that is to hook it into a bridge. This one's kind of interesting, and I'm not sure everybody knows uh, the, this one as, as commonly as the other two. What we do here, I don't, you probably can't see the markings on here very well, but uh, uh, one is marked plus, one is marked minus, and these are marked AC. So a, a bridge will be marked at least plus and minus. And they may assume that you automatically know that the other side is AC. But in this case, we're losing one, about 1 1.4 volts or so because we're losing 0.7 volts thereabouts across each diode and it's going through a minimum of two diodes. But see how our, our voltage is still positive, 3.3. Of course, your device out here has got to be able to tolerate this loss, either that or you've got to raise your supply voltage. But in this case, if we there it is. If we reverse the polarity, here's our wire coming in, here's our negative, and here's our positive. If we reverse them, so reverse the polarity, it still works. Nothing happens. Because if you do some of uh, the simple analysis of a bridge, it'll always put out plus to the to the output of which will be the uh, the cathodes of the um, of the diodes and the the anodes that are hooked together will be the negative side it'll always happen so it doesn't matter if you hook it up backwards it'll it'll still work that's an interesting uh, that's an interesting uh, way to do it. it takes four diodes instead of one but uh, it may be worth it And last and final here, to prove that this, this method with the bridge works, I've got a, um, a transformer hooked up, 6 volt output. I'm going to plug it in, being very careful not to shock myself. And uh, I'll plug the uh, primary in. So now we should have about 6 volts there. I'm going to disconnect from our DC power supply. Now remember, we're going to have a different voltage here because uh, it's set. Our transformer is different from our power supply. I've also put a 5 amp fuse in here so I won't blow it. But if I hook this up to our AC, we still get DC. There we go. About the same, 4.6, 4.7. That's a coincidence. But that's with 6 volts AC, 4.7 volts. And if we reverse the polarity again, even with AC coming in, we still get the same thing. So the bridge is, is, the, is the most sophisticated and of course the price of them nowadays is pretty cheap. So that's three different ways to protect your, your valuable device out here. I've had, some, uh, I've had a situation before where uh, I blew up a, a transceiver because I was careless and you gotta think about it this way. If, if you don't know what the polarity is of the device and you hook it up both ways you have absolutely, for 100% fact, hooked it up wrong. And if you don't have some method of protecting it, the diodes and the transistors do not like reverse polarity, and you and you will have destroyed your your expensive device, and uh, it can be very difficult and and tedious to repair. So I hope this helps, and I hope that uh, somehow it uh, it prevents. Um, 
reverse polarity situations and the destruction of your project or your amplifier or whatever it might be. Hope you enjoy.